discussion about education in the post-COVID era. We will start with uh, Cristina Villaplona Prieto, uh, who has a degree in economics from the University of Murcia and a PhD in economics from the University Carlos III of Madrid. She specialized in health economics, economics of aging, and microeconometrics. She's currently associate professor in the Department of Economic Analysis at the Faculty of Economics of the University of Murcia. And she's contemplating on how important is education in our lives after COVID-19 pandemic. Christina, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. I'm going to start with the presentation. So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity of sharing with you the results of this research. So first of all, we have suffered the pandemic, but also as teachers of professors, we have observed that is quite difficult to change from in-person or face-to-face -to, -face to online teaching. And from the point of view of children and teenagers, well, they have faced learning difficulties. Perhaps also the material they had was not the most suitable one, the motivation, the contact with teachers and peers. So all these circumstances have affected evidently, and I have my own experiences with respect to students who have come to university, so that have finished secondary education and started the first year in the um, business uh, degree administration and also political science degree. So, and there has been, been most, many difficulties um, and a big gap, but also, from the point of view of households and parents, I'm conscious that they have done a big effort, but perhaps the priority regarding education has not been the same in all households. It has been conditioned to other circumstances, perhaps the relation to economic activity of the parents, the difficulties for making ends meet. So previous evidence, for example, have shown that in low-income countries, enrollment rates tend to deteriorate in the face of negative income stocks. So better educated parents usually become more involved in the education of their children, and this circumstance also increases in the face of the pandemic of the health emergency. So as we will see before, there has been a rupture or a break in the world or in the society and now two different groups of people or families are going to emerge. And in this case, previous education and economic resources are going to make a big distinctions between these two groups. So the objective is not about academic performance or the continuity of studies or the availability of internet or computer at home. The objective of this paper is to analyze the effect of COVID on the consideration of the importance of education in your life, in the life of your children, and also from the point of view of policymakers. So I have focused into Eurobarometers because the Eurobarometers have the characteristics that many of these questions are repeated throughout the time. So there was one Eurobarometer at launch in June and July 2019 and another in July and August 2020. This survey is conducted by the European Commission and the sample is quite large, more than 30,000 observations for each wave. And also we have a sample of the whole European Union, including also United Kingdom. So our two dependent variables are one, if the respondent believes that the education system is one of the country most important concerns, you, so you think if the policymakers are doing what they should or they are more focused in other aspects, economic, industrial policy, health, whatever, or perhaps like in Spain that we have independent movements continuously and we have to deal with the sessions to one to another. 
And the other dependent variable is one if the respondent mentions that the education system is one of his most important personal concerns. So you say I have children and I devote time to them and I'm concerned about what they are studying, if they need help, if they need support, whatever. So in this map, you have three colors. And first of all, you have, well, the green circles, I don't know if I can move the upper bar because it's in my, okay. The red color denotes the average notification rate of COVID-19 cases. So higher intensity, for example, in Spain or in Sweden, it denotes higher notification rate. The green circles is the concern about education. So it's higher, for example, in Greece, but this is smaller in Italy. It's also large in Spain, in Belgium, and also the purple bricks denote the number of days of closures of school and university. So in France or in Belgium, it was smaller, but as I said before, in Spain, we have low confinement and one hour and a half year with school and universities almost closed. So we have to combine these characteristics in a model. More evidence. You have also the mortality. But to say that mortality is high, you have to compare this mortality with something. So what I have done is to compare the mortality during the first wave of the pandemic with the average in the period 2015-2018. So higher gray color denotes a higher mortality. In, taken as reference, not the country, but the region. So this regional classification is taking a reference what is called in Eurostat NUTS or NATS. So you have Scotland, so you have Belgium, and also you have the importance of education as one of the concerns from the point of view of policymakers. So no, I remark this, it's not what you are doing in your personal circumstance in favor of education or your opinion, is what you see in the communication media or in your, the regional government. As in Spain, you have that the competence of education is divided in 17 regions and each region has the uh, ability to do more or less whatever they want. So do you think that they are doing as much as they could? So we are going also to include these characteristics in the model. So you have on the left side, the two dependent variables, we are going to estimate two different education, but on the right side, the variables that we include are the same. We have the relative mortality, a dummy for the year, the interaction between the relative mortality and the year, which is going to measure strictly the impact of an excess mortality with the pandemic. Also the number of days of a school closure, the average notification rate, and X denotes a vector of sociodemographic characteristics which are age, gender, nationality, because we are to distinguish between foreign and national individuals, marital status, relation with economic activity, age when stop full-time education, household composition, having internet at home, difficulties in paying bills, self-reported level in society, which is a quite infrequent variable, in service and size of municipality of residence. So we are also, to include fixed effects, regional and country fixed effects, and we obtain robust standard errors with clusters at regional level. So I have numbered the results, so you can focus on what I'm going to say, but basically the left part of the table refers to the results for the importance of the education for the country, the right part of the table, the importance of education for yourself and your family. So taking into account the result for notification rate, which is labeled with the number one, we appreciate that it is significant. In the case of the country, surprisingly, I also have distinguished all samples, but also 
individuals that live with children, living with children, and individuals with not living with children. So it's significant and positive for individuals not living with children, but it's not significant for individuals living with children. However, the importance of education in your personal situation, you have the coefficient 0 0.0008, which is the highest magnitude in the situation living with children. So the notification rate is associated with an increase in the importance of education also, but in your private sphere, in your private dimension. With respect to the number of days of school closure, it's significant for the perspective of the country, the left part of the table, but the highest magnitude of the coefficient is observed for the personal dimension, 0 0.0005. So you are more concerned what, what is going to be with my child if he's going to have a gap of one year, more or less with, with you. In Spain, there was more or less that in 2020, there was a general pass for everybody. So yes, we couldn't do much more, but everybody <laughs> obtained a, a degree for that year, but they had important gaps and this situation was continued for another year more. So for many parents, I think this would be quite surprisingly saying, my child is going to pass from third degree to fourth degree or from eight degree to a nine degree, but is not learning as he should. And finally, the importance of mortality. So in this case, mortality is not significant from the perspective of what is doing the country. So it's meaning that the country is perhaps focused in other characteristics of the public sphere, but it's very, very important, 0 0.0118, so it increases one per percentage point, the concern about personal education of your children. Now, what I have done is re-estimated the model taking into account particular characteristics of the family. In this case, we have the self-reported social class, working class, middle class, and higher class. And we observe first that for working class, they think that an increase in relative mortality is highlighted in green, is associated with a decrease in what the country is doing in favor of education. And also, and also from the personal point of view, you have a negative result for the coefficient minus 0 0.0297. So both the family and the country are taking aside the education from the priorities of their lives. However, for middle class and higher class, they don't have a significant opinion about the education of the country perspective, but in their personal circumstances, they are more concerned about the education of their children. And this is important. It increases 2.69 percentual points for middle class and 7.76 percentual points in higher class. So there is from a negative result for working class to a very high positive result for higher class. Also, we have difficulties for making ends meet, always, almost always. The second is only often or never, almost never. In this case, households that are more worried about the economic resources, so they are more concerned what is happening with the education of the children. So if we are also saying that economic resources may are important for determining the success in your life. So public policy should do more in terms of fellowships or in case of in Spain, they also provide uh, free meals and free books because we observe here that families say, well, education in this moment is not such a big concern. There are other important priorities and I understand it, but in the future, what would be the consequences? It's not significant for household where difficulties making its meets is only often. And for the most affluent households, you observe that they are more or less satisfied with what the country is doing in favor of education, increases the concern in 
percentual points. And from the personal point of view, we also appreciate a positive and significant effect. So my personal appreciation is that there's going to be a larger gap in the following years about the educational endowment between different social classes. Also, we observe the same effect, you know, that more unfavorable individuals or more unfavorable families most affected by the pandemic are going to say that education is not a priority because in my opinion, there are others, for example, having food or paying the, the heating bill. So for foreign, you observe negative and significant effect. For unemployed, you also observe negative and significant effect. And for those still studying, taking into account that in this survey, individuals at age 18 and older, these individuals are studying at university or are studying a PhD or a postgraduate. So they are most concerned, one of the most concerned about the education. They say that the country, the policymakers are not giving enough resources or sufficient answers to what is happening. And also they are very concerned with a positive effects from the personal point of view. In this case, it would indicate that they are doing an effort to overcome this negative circumstance. Now some graphs. So what I have, and so here is the average notification rate of new cases per 100 million inhabitants over your personal opinion about education. So you have two types of families, families with children and families without children. And also you consider if schools or universities or high schools opened by the 31st of July or were still closed. So in the left part of the pictures, so pictures one and two, they correspond to situations where there is no children at home. So the concern about education is quite low, regardless if the schools were open or closed. However, when there are children at home, you appreciate that the concern about education is higher and it remains high until we have a high notification rate. So when notification rate is above 90 per 100 million inhabitants, so it remains very high in picture three if schools are open by the 31st of July. You say, well, perhaps there is a higher probability of contagion. My child is going to take the COVID at home and to the grandma and everything. But if schools were still closed, the degree of concern decreases. So you say, well, at least we have perhaps online teaching. And in this case, one thing, high level of contagion uh, decreases the degree of worry because the schools are still closed. In this case, we offer the situation, we compare the perspective of the country and your personal perspective regarding the relative mortality and also comparing households with and without children. So picture one is households without children and you have your personal opinion. Well, I have no children. I have other things in my head. Education is not a big concern. If you have children at home, you observe that uh, your concern increases with mortality, but with mortality is around 20% higher as compared to the period 2015-2018. That is when there is a 20% of over mortality, the degree of concern about education decreases. So perhaps when there was the month of March 2020 in Spain, like we have like 1 million or 10 million people dying each day. And there was a big crisis in residential homes and everybody was so afraid that you couldn't think of another, that the nurses, the doctors, whatever, but not in, in education. Well, in education, you, you thought because you were also a professor, an online professor, but everybody was still very afraid. And I remember that part of my online lessons, 
I was speaking about my students, about their personal situation, where are you, they were in their villages or whatever. And, and we had to take part of the time of the class to make like some of, I don't know, coaching or whatever. So now from the point of view of the country, again, not living with children, the degree of concern is low and living with children, the degree of concern is higher, but you observe that not as high as your personal concern. So you always think that the personal concern of the policymaker is lower and it's even lower in a situation of over mortality. So finally, we have two different worlds, one including immigrants, working class, unemployed, who find very difficult to consider that education is a priority because they have other important concerns. Importantly, those who are still studying and who are going to go to the labor market very soon, they are concerned, but they think that they are not many perhaps probabilities of succeeding because they are quite critical with the interventions of policymakers. Parents with better economic status and also have more analysis taking into account the number of years of education, they are very concerned with this situation and perhaps they are going to devote more time to make the children acquire the necessary abilities to overcome the lack of face-to-face -face education. But a common characteristic is that none of these groups consider that the education system is one of the country's top priorities. So in my personal view, these are important black clouds in the future, because are these changes a consequence of the pandemic and the economic crisis? Now we have an, a terrible inflation in Spain. So this is going also to affect more uh, less affluent households. Or has the pandemic simply exacerbated a previous trend? What will be the long-term effects? What will this if, uh, affect children's educational outcomes? So I'd like, finally, it's like a personal experience. I have realized that uh, my students in two years of online education, they have lost the ability of writing with pen and paper. And I think that both abilities are complementary using a computer, but also writing with pen and paper. And now they are unable to do that. And they are 18 years old. And for me, this is a failure or a very big problem because I cannot say, well, yes, I have, I have been uh, doing tasks with them and they have been giving me pages of their notes with pen and paper to make them practice solving equations and everything, but that's only a, an example. So thanks for your attention and that's all.